Hello everyone! We have arrived at the final part of this little series looking at the Delta V costs of making transfers to various bodies in Kerbal Space Program. We started this journey looking at the Moon where we used these four formulas to get the job done. We then took on Duna where we looked at how to take on elliptical orbits and learned that where you meet your target in its orbit does affect the Delta V cost of the mission. There are links to the top right if you need to go back and review either of these videos. Today we are adding inclination changes into the mix by taking on the closest planet to the Sun, MOHO. It is certainly messier than the Delta V maps imply but if you are ready, let's do the math. We will start once again by looking at the Delta V map on the KSP wiki, link in the description. This time we will just keep track of the total cost because as we discovered with Duna, the individual numbers at each leg can vary depending upon where you encounter your target. Starting from our 80 km orbit above Kerbin, we have 930 meters per second to escape the sphere of influence, then an additional 760 to encounter MOHO. For now I want you to stow away the 2520 you see here, we will get back to it in a moment. Continuing on we get an additional 2400 meters per second to circularize to a low orbit about MOHO of 20 kilometers. If you are a little surprised at how expensive this is, well we are not done yet. Let's get back to that 2520. This gives you the maximum cost of the inclination change you will need to make. It is very tempting to ignore this number. After all, it is possible to set up your ejection from Kerbin in such a way that you hardly need to make a mid-course correction at all. But as you'll see, those that ignore this number are doing so at their peril. So we're going to add this on giving us a total budget of 6610 meters per second. With Duna last episode, we found that if we approximated Duna's orbit to a circle, we calculate much the same numbers we see on the Delta V map. And if you follow the same process for MOHO, you will again find that you get pretty much the same numbers as the map for the ejection and the capture costs. Instead of repeating that whole process, I want to instead concentrate on this 2520 meters per second for the inclination change. Where does this number come from? I've talked about inclination changes before and back in that episode I developed this formula for calculating the delta V cost of a plane change where the theta is the angle of the change you want to make and the V is your current velocity. MOHO has an inclination of 7 degrees while Kerbin's is 0, so the plane change you would make to match inclinations is 7 degrees. Your velocity is constantly increasing as you fall along the elliptical path of your transfer orbit and the higher your velocity, the higher the delta V cost for the plane change. Your velocity will be highest when you reach MOHO's orbit. Moreover, the closer to the Sun you are, the faster your speed will be, so we are going to assume the worst case scenario of making the plane change at MOHO's periapsis. Now some of you may be realizing that if this were the situation, there is a much better place for you to make the plane change and you are right. You may also be thinking that you don't have to match inclinations at all and you are right on that one too, but let's stick with this absolutely worst case scenario for now and deal with all the rest a little later in this video. We have got 7 degrees for the theta, what we need is our velocity at periapsis. We ran into this with Duna and we got our answer by using the circular orbital velocity formula along with the first vis viva equation. As this is going to come up a fair bit in this video, I want to take a moment right now to combine these two formulas into a single new formula which will calculate this for us directly. A bit of time now will save us time coming up and if I lose you during this don't worry about it, all you really need to know is how to use the formula that we are going to develop. We know that this formula will calculate the velocity in a circular orbit of radius r. To get an elliptical orbit with an apoapsis of r2, we would need to add the velocity calculated using the first vis viva equation. Note the square root of mu over r is a common factor which we can pull to the front getting this. The ones cancel and we can combine all the remaining terms under a single square root. A nice little formula but we can still eliminate a variable and make something that is more general purpose. Recall that the A is the semi-major axis which is just the average of the periapsis and apoapsis. 
which are R and R2 in this example. Rearranging, we can see that R2 is equal to 2A minus R. We'll substitute this in for the R2 in our formula. It looks a little messier now, but it simplifies nicely. Let's write what's in the brackets as two separate fractions. Notice the A's divide out in the first fraction and the R's in the second, getting us this sweet little formula, but it gets even better. If you did the work to make a formula to calculate your speed at Applewapsis, you actually end up with this exact same formula. In fact, it isn't hard to show that this formula calculates the speed at any point on any elliptical orbit for any distance from the center of the parent body as represented by the R. So now we can quickly calculate our speed at periapsis. Our transfer orbit has an apoapsis equal to Kerbin's orbital radius of about 13.6 million kilometers and a periapsis at Moho's periapsis of 4.2 million kilometers. This gets a semi-major axis of about 8.9 million. Substituting in and using the standard gravitational parameter for the sun gets a velocity of 20,621 meters per second, which when substituted into our inclination change formula yields a delta V cost for the inclination change of 2,518 meters per second, matching the delta V map when we round to the nearest 10. But as I implied earlier, if this were the situation, you can do much better. If you can match Moho's inclination at periapsis, that means that one of the relative ascending or descending nodes was at periapsis. And as the other node is always at the opposite side of the orbit, that means you could have made the plane change at apoapsis of your transfer orbit, right after leaving Kerbin's SOI. Your speed would be much lower here. In fact, if you work it out, the seven degree inclination change here would only cost 779 meters per second. But now the double butt. <laughs> this can't happen either. This is because Moho's argument to periapsis is 15 degrees. This means that Moho's periapsis is always 15 degrees from its ascending node. They'll never be on top of each other. If we are still considering meeting Moho at its periapsis and we want to match inclinations, we would have to consider how far from the sun's center are we when 15 degrees ahead of periapsis. This gets into more math than I want to get into here. I'll post a link in the description. But you get an R of about 4.3 million kilometers, which results in an inclination change now costing 2,392 meters per second, a little less than before. But I'm getting too far into the weeds here because you don't have to match inclinations at all. If either the ascending or descending node are where you are encountering Moho, then your orbits are going to cross there. You'll encounter Moho, albeit at an angle, but you can still capture normally. That's the whole trick when setting up an encounter with Moho or any other body in an inclined orbit. You adjust your trajectory either through a mid-course correction burn or during your ejection from Kerbin so that either the relative ascending or descending node is at your encounter. So does this mean you need not worry about this inclination change cost at all? Most definitely not, because coming in at an angle to Moho's orbit still carries a cost whether you like it or not. But in order to see that, we have to work out some encounter velocities first. With Duna, we discovered the most expensive situation was encountering Duna at its periapsis. With Moho, the worst case scenario is meeting at Moho's apoapsis. At the end, we'll compare what we calculate to the total predicted by the delta V map, even with its suspect inclination costs. Our transfer orbit will have an apoapsis equal to Kerbin's orbital radius and a periapsis equal to Moho's apoapsis of 6.3 million kilometers. Recall from last episode that we can use the second vis viva equation to calculate the velocity at which we must leave Kerbin's SOI. This gets us 1,890.3 meters per second. By the way, we now have a second way to calculate this number. We can use the velocity formula we developed this episode to calculate our velocity at the apoapsis of our transfer. This gets 7,394.2 meters per second. 
This is the orbital velocity relative to the Sun. To get the velocity relative to Kerbin, we subtract off Kerbin's orbital velocity of 9,284.5 to get the same answer as before. Either way, we now need to shift our work to Kerbin's SOI to get the velocity we need at low Kerbin orbit. That's this formula. Substituting in, we get 3,725.1, and like we did before with Duna, we subtract off our LKO orbital velocity of 2,278.9 to get the required ejection of 1,446 meters per second. With that done, let's look at the capture costs at MOHO. And this is where stuff gets really messy, but first let's get our orbital velocities at our encounter. I now need to use our new formula. You'll see the reason why soon enough. With it, we calculate our orbital velocity relative to the Sun to be 15,922.0 meters per second. We can calculate MOHO speed with the same formula, though our semi-major axis will change to the semi-major axis of MOHO's orbit. This has MOHO moving at a speed of 12,185.9 meters per second at our encounter. At this point, you may be tempted to just subtract these two numbers to get our encounter speed with MOHO, but things aren't quite that simple. We've yet to factor in that we are coming in at an angle. At first glance, it would seem that this angle would be MOHO's 7 degree inclination, but it rarely is. Even if you are lucky enough to encounter MOHO right at its ascending or descending node with Kerbin, as previously discussed, it won't be at MOHO's periapsis or apoapsis. And when two ellipses intersect at anywhere but these two points, there will always be some radial component to the encounter which adds to the encounter angle. And I'm not even begun to factor in that we've likely already moved out of Kerbin's orbital plane, either through a mid-course correction or by adding a normal component to our Kerbin's ejection. This gets into messy equations that need to be solved by brute force trial and error, something computers are quite good at, but something beyond the scope of this series. I'll put a link to Robert Browning's Rocket and Space Technology site in the description, which is a great resource if you want to dig deeper. What I'm going to do instead is assume a higher end, though not a typical encounter angle, of 20 degrees. Getting back to the problem. Moho is traveling at about 12 kilometers per second as represented by this arrow. Mathematically, we would refer to this as a vector. We are coming in at almost 16 kilometers per second, but at an angle of 20 degrees to Moho's direction. The difference between these two velocities is represented by this vector. To find out how big this vector is, we have to do some trigonometry. Specifically, we need the law of cosines. I apologize if you have not yet encountered trig in your math careers or have simply forgotten it. I'll leave another link in the description for those who want to go there, but I'm just going to forge ahead substituting into the cosine law, pulling out a calculator to get our encounter speed of MOHO to be 6,112.3 meters per second. Note that this is close to 2,400 meters per second more than the encounter speed you would have gotten if you didn't factor in the 20 degree encounter angle. This gets more familiar from here. Moving into Moho's sphere of influence, we now know that we are crossing Moho's SOI at 6.1 kilometers per second. We want to circularize at an altitude of 20 kilometers. We first calculate what our speed would be there, which comes out to be 6,210.8 meters per second. For a circular orbit here, we need a velocity of 790.2 meters per second, which means that our capture burn would be 5,421 meters per second. Wow, that's a lot, especially when compared to the 2,400 meters per second we see on the Delta V map. But remember, our calculation takes into account the encounter angle. The 2,400 doesn't. As well, I mentioned earlier that the individual numbers on each leg will vary depending upon the nature of the transfer. It's the total that counts. And if we add on the cost we calculated for the ejection, we get a total of 6,867 meters per second, just 257 more than the total on the Delta V map. Though remember, we're pretty much doing a worst case scenario here. Oh my gosh, that one was a bit of a slog, but if you're up to testing yourself, I have an example from my own Let's Play series. 
Here we have the Cariner 1, which is already flown by EVE and then MOHO putting itself into the orbit we see here. An orbit set to encounter MOHO again after 5 more orbits, very close to MOHO's periapsis. Here are the apoapsis and periapsis of my orbit. My relative inclination with MOHO is 15.6 degrees, but as you can see, there is a radial component to my encounter. I estimated this angle to be 12 degrees, and using some vector arithmetic, again beyond the scope of this video, these two angles combine into an encounter angle of 20 degrees. The vessel currently has 1,823 meters per second of delta V left. What do you think? Can I get my capture when I get around to MOHO again? And if not, how far am I off by? Leave your answers in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, why not hit the thumbs up and subscribe? But in the meantime, this episode is coming to a close. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.